Now you can also listen to us on your favorite podcast with just a search, Faith Temple and Cog. Listen on the go with your favorite streaming platforms, like YouTube, Spotify, Audible, Apple, Amazon Music, Google, Facebook, iHeartRadio and TuneIn. If you would like more information about us, you can visit our website at www.ftnfcog.org. Join us Sunday at 11 a.m. Online giving made easy with Giveify. Try it now. Like and subscribe to our YouTube page. Go to youtube.com slash at ftnfcog. Background up, I can't find it. <laughs> It was all right. <laughs> so, hey, so we're going to have to, going to, have to deal yeah. with this, the Bahamas. <laughs> I wish I was there. Yeah. All right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, Elder, you want to open up in prayer? Amen. Yes. Amen. Father God, we just thank you again, Father, for this opportunity just to hear your word again, Father. Thank you for feeding our souls on this evening, Father. Touch our body, strengthen us, God. Give us strength, oh God. To be a hearer and doer of your word, Father. We ask you to bless us of everyone that's under the sound of my voice right now, God. Say your power, your anointing, like that would be full, Father. Oh God, shake the foundations, oh God, oh God, of our worlds, oh God, if you'll do what you'll call us to do. Father, we thank you right now. We bless you right now, God. We thank you for the healing and deliverances of our families right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, we praise and we thank you, oh God, for everything that the enemy tried to do, God. You came in, oh Father, and you destroyed it. God, we bless your name. Yes. And I praise you right now, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. And the song says, uh, your grace and mercy. Hallelujah. Uh, we still, uh, you got the uh, the lesson right out, right? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, okay. All right, I'm going to see. I got on half on my screen. So uh, I can continue. we're going to continue. Uh, where we left off, we're going to go back because we dropped, we left off uh, last week uh, in the hope of his calling. But I want to review just the three uh, uh, the point, bullet points that I have on the screen right there. Go up, uh, Elder, to the top um, is C, the hope of his calling. Amen. Uh, and we want to start there. Uh, do y'all have your uh, lesson? Okay. Amen. And, it, and the three Buddhists before we get to that was everyone is called to belong to God, to Christ, and to participate in his redemptive work. Everyone is commanded to work to the degree they are able. And God calls us to a whole life, not just a job. Hallelujah. Then we're going to the, and I want you to highlight that. God calls us to a whole life, not just a job. It's a whole life thing with God. That's W-H-O-L-E, life. The hope of his calling. And as you can read, God wants us to know the hope of his calling. God's calling for us and the hope of that call have been laid out for us in verses 3 through 14 of Ephesians. Uh, I mean, 2 Peter, excuse me. These verses tell us over and over again that God chose us to be holy and blameless before him. He called us to make us his own. He would forgive us, adopt us as his children, and pay all our sin debt in Jesus' blood. Why do you say that? Why does God do all that? So that we can be to the praise of his glory. That is his, our calling. That is the hope of our calling. God wants us to know that and know him more intimately through that knowledge. Amen. So uh, God has a plan, saints, and, and, and we got to uh, hear to that plan. It's not a uh, when you feel like serving God. This is a whole life. God wants us to be committed totally to him. Uh, uh, not when we it's convenient for us, but totally committed to him. 
Number two says, some people will see the word hope and think of the hope we have of heaven. But God is talking about the hope of our calling here on this earth. We have hope for an eternal relationship with God as a child in his house, which is true. But this is the hope of our calling. God has called us to a purpose. God hasn't given us hope to come together eight times a month to sing songs and uh, pray prayers and listen to, to me. Uh, this is about God's call for us to be totally, totally transformed into his image. Amen. And and, and I, I want you to look at that. It just totally is for us to be totally transformed into God's image. And and then when I put on there, I, I think we read that, and I don't want you to say, we need to see the magnificence of this hope to be transformed into God's image. That is the hope that God wants us to be transformed in. And then we need to see the magnificence of this, how great that is to be in the image and transform to God's image is something special, saints. It's not everybody. Uh, I want y'all to look at God and angels, got cherubims, got seraphims, he got uh, uh, elders sitting around the throne, he got all these things, but God created all them. But man, he did something special with him. Man, he created in his image and likeness and gave him uh, power to rule over this earth. Hallelujah. But uh, that's something special to God. And God uh, desired man to, to look like him and act like him and carry himself like him. But we let, we sin. Man fell. And by God's grace and mercy, he allowed, hallelujah, and sent his only begotten son, hallelujah, to redeem us back to our status with God, hallelujah. Mm, this is not a hope to go through some ritual or routine. This is a hope that has been promised to us by God himself. God promised us this. No man, no nothing. I was reading over in, in uh, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse 5. It said he has earnestly put down a down payment. Amen. <laughs> you know, when you buy a house, they ask for earnest money. Hallelujah. And he gave us the earnest by giving us the Holy Spirit. So if God has already put a down payment through the Holy Spirit down for us, hallelujah. Let me go read that because somebody looking at me all funny. I don't want nobody to think that I'm making stuff up. Hallelujah. It's all in the scripture. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 5 and 5. Now he that had wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also has given unto us the earnest of the spirit. Earnest, I took that as it being the, the first you put down a down payment. He has put down the down payment of us for us is the Holy Spirit. So this got to mean when you buy something, when you purchase something, uh, when you put the earnest money down, that means you're going to fulfill what you said your obligation. God is fulfilling his obligation to us, and we have to understand that we have a down payment on our lives. Amen. Over in the Old Testament, uh, I think it's Jehoshaphat said, uh, in the book of Judges or one of the Old Testament, I can't remember right now, but it says that I have found a ransom, and Jesus was our ransom to pay our price for our sin. Amen. So uh, God is fulfilling. He put the earnest money down through his Holy Spirit. So this will come to pass that we are going to have this hope that he promised us himself. We have hope that God wants us to become more than we ever imagined. Hallelujah. Uh, I don't know uh, uh, what y'all do and what, how y'all think. Everybody has their own thing with God. Amen. But I, the more and more I find out about God, the more and more knowledge that I find uh, God gives me and open up mysteries to me, the more and more I realize, hallelujah, that I have a long way to go, amen, to be what God wants me to be, amen, to be in his image, hallelujah, that he has established for me, not myself, because I can't, I can't even phantom 
uh, being in the likeness of God. I can't even fathom being a uh, 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 God would even have a purpose for me in life. But God orchestrated everything. He is God. Amen. I mean, uh, before I have, I'm, I'm, I'm a, we have hope that God wants us to become more than we ever imagined we could be, hallelujah, or would be. And then I asked that y'all a question. I wrote down right there. What, what do you want? What is your hope for your life? Hallelujah. And then I would add in there, uh, is it lined up with God? Amen. We all have our dreams and hopes. Hallelujah. But one thing I found out, hallelujah, and I'm learning more and more. Amen. Your hope and dreams don't matter. Hallelujah. Because time will tell. Amen. Amen. Uh, there's a, a saying I'm, I'm also preparing for funeral uh, Saturday. And I was thinking about the the, the the death and how we have victory. But the unsaved don't have victory over death. And death is something they fear. Amen. And and and, and but the saved have eternal life. Uh, I heard a preacher way back said that uh, death is the hound dog of the universe. Once you are born, it's on your trail. It's hunting you down. From the time you're born, death gets on your trail and it's tracking you down. And it comes to a date that we're all going to have to face. Hallelujah. And he's going to catch up with us then. But if you are born again, hallelujah, don't, death don't get the victory. It don't end at death because we learn through the word of God. There's a resurrection coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that, that if we have Jesus, we're in Jesus. There is a resurrection of our bodies, which will be eternal with God. My God. Hallelujah. That, that is the hope that we, we have. We have, and we have this promise from God. Not from no man, not from me. It's from God. Hallelujah. Uh, my Lord, eternal life. I'm going to be what God would have me to be. Peter. Now, I wrote these scriptures down. Amen. This is uh, Second Peter. If you don't, can't follow on the paper. It's Second Peter, verse 1, verses 3 through 11 in your Bibles. Second Peter. Verse 1, I mean, chapter 1, excuse me. Hallelujah. If you can't go through the papers, it's in, the, it's in your Bible. Second Peter. Verse, chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. And it reads as such. Hallelujah. I got to do something real quick. Y'all just hold on. Hold on. Okay. All right. Second Peter 1. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. If y'all would underline, pertain unto life. God has, through his divine power, has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So that eliminates any kind of excuse where nobody can live holy, godly all the time. Amen. Nobody, I just like, I, I got this and I, I got these problems. But God said, he promised, he has given unto us, through his divine power, he has given unto us everything that pertains to life and godliness. I mean, so what that mean? I mean, through the knowledge of him. Hallelujah, that called you and me, <laughs> who called us to glory and virtue. In other words, God has made it so you and I cannot fail. We cannot come up with excuses for why we can't live the way God would have us to live. Why our thoughts are the way they are. Why our behavior is the way they are. 
God said, through my divine power, I have given unto you everything that pertaineth to life and godliness. Life and godliness. Hallelujah. It's coming down, saints, because it's, it's so much out here now where people can grasp hold of any false doctrine and think that it's real. That's why I have the scripture written here, not pertaining to what I feel, but what the scripture says here. And it comes through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceedingly, exceedingly great and precious promises. Hallelujah. hallelujah. If, if, the, in the Old Testament, the old saints were looking for the promise. Hallelujah. And they, they weren't able to see the promise. They just know that the promise was coming. When we get over to the New Testament, hallelujah, they were looking for the promise too of the Messiah to return. That's going to give them victory over uh, this world. But the promise was right there in the midst of them, and they couldn't recognize it. He fulfilled the promise. Uh, he was born of a virgin birth. Amen. He uh, did miracles and signs and wonders. He did everything according to what the scripture said he was going to do. But they could not recognize Jesus as the, the promise for salvation. And they crucified Jesus. Hallelujah. And and then and then and then then he did the when they crucified him, they thought it was all over, but we know that he rose up on the third day. Walked among us for 40 days. Hallelujah. And then uh, was seen by people. Amen. This is the promise that, that everything is being fulfilled in there. We talk about his hope of his calling. This is our hope. We have this hope that we have Jesus Christ. He made a way for us. And God has given us great and exceedingly great and precious promises that we, by these, by this, Jesus Christ come in, died, sacrificed life, being raised again on the third day, gave us resurrection, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Not man's nature, saints, but the divine nature. Not man's nature, but the divine nature. You got to get your mind set off of this cardinal way of thinking and think spiritually. How did God say you got, Jesus said you got to worship what? Him in spirit and in truth. Not through the cardinal ways that we think in this world. Not, well, I got, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And that's enough for today. That's speaking time. That's saying you're going to be in charge and you're going to do what you want, how much you want, and then you're going to stop. But when you're serving God and you have these promises, God laid these things out for you that this must be done according to my word. You got to live a, a, a life that shows. That, I'm a, that you're my child. You are the, the ones that will be the, the light into this dark world. As the other right just said, that we had a shooting, shootout in Warsaw uh, a few hours ago. I don't know when the time it was, but it was a few hours ago that right here in Warsaw, there was a shooting at the Hardens. Now, we don't think that happened down here in the country, but that's what the state of this world is. And if we're not ready, that made me think man, if Vicky hadn't to be there or my mom and Johnny and Brenda, if they had been out there in that area, hallelujah, they'd been in the midst of that. But see, I praise God and thank God that they weren't there. That God, hallelujah, shielded them and moved them in another direction or wherever they were headed. Hallelujah, the, 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 it happened, but it spared them through his grace and mercy. Uh, some people will say they were, well, they, just, they weren't going that direction. But we don't know what God did to prevent that happening in their area where they were at. Hallelujah. So I just thank God. I praise God that they came back home safely today. Amen. That we were promised. That, that by these were by takers of the divine nation, not ha having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, that's where the downfall of man, and in my opinion, and according to the word of God, uh, lust is what keeps us from being all giving it all to God uh, we're afraid that um, we're going to lose something if we give it to God uh, we're gonna, our life has to change and it ain't going to be the kind of life that I want when I give it over to God 
But God said, as a, I, you, yo, you can't even think. It have gained into the minds of man, kind, men or women, what I have in store for them. Now that that would blow your mind if you just ponder that. What is your greatest thing that you would like to have? God said that is not having me enter into your mind. So whatever you're thinking about, that's way so far back from what God has in store for us. Hallelujah. But we got to trust God for everything. And, and not what we, our lustful eyes and lusts of the flesh see and want. Think about it, saints. We we got a little thing going over here and, and, and getting corn. We, we, we have enough corn to supply Ethiopia. <laughs> Just oh, being, being a little facetious, amen. <laughs> but, but we buying corn, <laughs> buying vegetables uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday because it's, we see it and it's for a cheap price. But we don't need all that corn. And now we're at the point where we boiling it and trying to store it away, the freezer getting full, and and and, 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 and we don't have nowhere else to put it. Uh, I don't know what they're going back Friday or not, but we have enough corn, amen, to supply, amen, uh, uh, for a couple of weeks. I'm getting a point I'm trying to say is our lust and greed, not saying we did it intentionally to be greedy, but it causes us to free. We can get cheap. Let me get it. Let me get it. That's a mentality that we have to get out of because it's hard in the way of thinking. When I can trust God, because then David said, and the scripture said, I'm, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. So God supplies all my need. In the scripture, Psalm 23 says what? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So whatever we have need, if we trust in God and being spiritual about it, God will supply our need. Amen. We don't need all the excess stuff. That's what I'm trying to get at, that we have in life. But our lust, the cardinal way that we were raised and the cardinal nature, the sin nature that's in us, we see it, we want it, we get it. Hallelujah. I hope. Uh, you understand that it's a, we got to get out of the car in the way and think spiritually. Amen. Now, if uh, anybody's on the internet want to say something, they can. Uh, just uh, just wave your hand, shake the mic or whatever, and we'll try to get you in. I know Elder Wright is looking. Amen. Now, I uh, did a, a, a little... Uh, Insert, Elder Wright, can you put that insert up? Because I want them to see, hallelujah, and maybe they can uh, understand that. Right. Yes, sir. Is that the? It begins at the bottom. Okay, I see. But I want to. I want to say, I uh, when I was doing the lesson, God gave me and said, if maybe we know who God is. And the names of God, maybe we have a better understanding of who God is. Because we say God, and do, do, what do we mean? Uh, we say God. I have another scripture. I, I'm going to have to get it to uh, the people that's out on the internet because I don't have that. Elder, can I post, share a screen? Uh, yes, it says uh, list of God names. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, technology got me now. Hold on. I got to move this picture. All right. Now put the names of God, the names of God. Now you can find these in your Bible. You can find them in, in your, uh, in any study material. But I wanted to, because we say God all the time. But do we really know when we say God? I put the name up here. Now, El, Elim, that means mighty one. El means strong, mighty, and mighty one. El Shaddai means almighty God and most powerful God. Now, this is the God we're talking about, y'all. This, this, this is the God. I'm telling you, this, we, this God that created the heavens and the earth, 
said, this is what I'm giving you. If you come to Jesus, I'm the one that's going to supply. I'm the one that's going to take care. I'm the one that's going to heal. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to make sure that you, God looks at us as the apple of his eye. And when you got the apple of your eye, you you making sure that that is taken care of. That's something you cherish, right? This God, the El Shaddai, says, ha, I'm going to take care of you. The El Shaddai, the God that did everything, says, I giving you, I'm going to give you a promise that when you come to me, when you are reconciled back to me through Jesus Christ, I will take care of you here and for eternity. That's a promise from God, you saints. The God. Uh, look at the next na name here. Uh, El, I don't even know how to pronounce that. El Yon, the most high God. El Olam, the everlasting eternal God. El Mashah, God of salvation. The God, the God, the deliverer. Adonum, master, superior, the highest authority. My God, this is who we're, I'm, I'm, this is what the Bible, this is the God that the Bible talks about. Now, I don't know what other religions got, but this is our God that's talking about it in this Bible. He said, I am, told Moses, I am. He said, tell him, I am the God who has existed for eternity and has no beginning or end. That's our God. He never changes. He's the same yesterday as he is today. My saints of God, that's who promised you this. This is who says, I give you eternal life. I will take care of you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. All I want you to do is have faith in me. My Lord, my God, hallelujah. Look, then they, then they came up with this, uh, Jehovah, the eternal self-existing God. The self-existing God? Loves me, the God that doesn't look around, doesn't need anybody else, doesn't get counsel with nobody else. Just yeah, the one that said, "Let it be," and it was. The the one that said, <laughs> the Bible said he sits on the circle of the earth. The Bible said that he walked the clouds on his footsteps. My Lord, this God is so great. Y'all, do you realize this God is promising you all of these things in life? All we got to do is give will come over to him. Turn our lives over to him. Jehovah Rapha, uh, the eternal who heard, heals. Hallelujah. We, we, we hear the people calling these names, but do you really know the name, meaning of the name? Jehovah Jireh, the eternal will provide. Jehovah Nisi, the eternal is my banner. Jehovah Teskenia, the eternal our righteous. Jehovah Tespa, the eternal of hosts and armies. Jehovah Salom, the eternal peace of peace. I mean, the God of peace. This, this is the things of God. Man has God has demonstrated and gave you the scripture of the side where you can find these things. He is God. Now, if you look at that and think about that, what we just read, and you go back over here and think about insert that this God, the God I just identified to you, the God that I went down and told and said that I have given you divine, uh, through my divine power, I have given you all things that pertain to life now and for eternal and godliness. This God has given you precious promises, exceedingly great promises. My Lord, my God. Then it's on us to get to know God. It's on us to find out, hallelujah, let me study the word of God. Let me read about this God on my own. No man, You can read about God and don't need me to tell you where to read it at. You just need to open the Bible and study. So that God can, can speak to you or, or you can get a little knowledge of who God is. Oh, my God. And beside this, I'm, I'm, I'm moving on now. And still in Peter now. And beside this, giving all diligence. In other words, we're going to have to open up the book. We're going to have to do, require to do something for God to, to, to be able to, to use, uh, to give us that wisdom and knowledge inside of us. Amen. So we have to 
we have to do all diligence. If we have faith in Jesus Christ, that's the beginning right there, faith. And then to add to faith, we have to give all diligence. We have to add virtue. Now, uh, dear body, and I hope everybody knows what diligence is. Amen. Uh, because uh, I uh, asked Elder Wright, I sent them. Uh, let me see if I can blow that, that thing up right there. Can, can y'all read that? Uh, diligence. You can't read it. Okay. These are the different definitions of uh, what Peter wrote down here. Diligence, uh, faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, uh, godliness, brotherly kindness, and charity. Amen. Brotherly kindness and charity. Amen. So I put down diligence. I, I In this paper, I, I try to get it to you next week. It says careful and persistent work or effort. And the synonyms for it is conscientiousness. Asidious, and then I went for the Greek meaning, means speed, dispatch, eagerness, earnestness, and then uh, and business, earnest care, fullness, diligence, forwardness, and haste. These are the things of the word. I'm not going to go through each and every one of them, but I will pass that on to you. But I want to say to be diligent about studying the word of God, be diligent about adding to your faith, hallelujah. Virtue. Virtue is something you have to have. Virtue is something that you, you got to, to, to <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, I don't know how to, uh, I want y'all to grasp this. It's on our part to do this. We want the great things that God has promised us. We want eternal life. Hallelujah. But we got to be diligent about adding to our faith, adding to virtue, and then to knowledge and temperance and patience, and godliness, these, and, 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 and to godliness, brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness, charity. But these the things, this, this is what Peter wrote, and, and saying what the Holy Spirit gave him, for if these things be in you, and abound, and if you want to highlight that, underline that, if the things I just read to you, faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, uh, godliness, brotherly kindness, uh, charity, if these things be in you and abound, and abound, and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. These things must exist, be a part of you. And if these things abound in you, hallelujah, then you will, hallelujah, be, you won't be uh, burned and you won't be unfruitful. Hallelujah. But you will be, uh, you have great knowledge of our Lord Jesus. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. People do that every day now. They go on in his life and they forget that Jesus Christ went to the cross, paid a price for their sins. How did they forget? Because they lose track. And they think through time, I'm saved. I'm once saved, always saved. I can, well, I'm saved. I know I'm good. I know I'm, but dude, if you have not got the knowledge, the virtue, and all these things that, that's listed here in Peter talking about, these things have to abound in your life. It's no more thy will, but his will be done. We have to have these things. I, I, and, and, and in this society that we live in now, we don't know when and where it's going to happen. Anything can happen, no matter where we go. But we have to have Jesus in us and lockdown in us, not wishy-washy sometime here, sometime there. Oh, it's Sunday, so let me praise the Lord. Let me shout for joy. Let me give thanks to God. Hallelujah. Nobody is promised to wake up in the morning. I'm not promised to wake up in the morning. Hallelujah. But I had to have peace inside of me. I had to have the uh, Jehovah uh, Shalom. Hallelujah. I had to know that he is my peace. I know that he He takes care of me. He's providing for me. And it's his grace and his mercy. If I, uh, if I don't wake up, he's got me taken care of. Mm. Uh, 
Hallelujah. But he that lack these things is blind and cannot see a fall and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Hallelujah. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Make your election and calling sure. Now, everybody is being called to come to Jesus. That's everybody. Hallelujah. But you have to steer. You can't be, I'm going to go to Jesus on Sunday, but Monday I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to go to Jesus on Wednesday, then I'm two thirds, I'm going to do what I want. God saying you're playing games, and I'd rather you be uh, uh, hot. I'd rather you be hot. If you're going to be hot for me, be hot. If you're not going to be cold, be cold. But don't be lukewarm. Because the scripture says he has spit you out of his mouth. He spilled you out of his mouth. He don't want nobody. Nobody. If I ask anybody, do they, do they like um, uh, people that's, uh, what do you call them? Uh, Sometime, sometimey, amen. So when 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 it's flowing is good, uh, they there. When the flowing is bad, they gone, amen. They not where they come in the way they want. They want all the benefits from Christianity, all the benefits that God can provide, but don't want to give anything back to God. Uh, they can say thank you, Jesus, long as uh, it doesn't. Uh, cause them uh, any pain or headache. They can clap along with everybody, go along with the, the program as long as uh, it doesn't cost them anything. God don't want them kind of people either. If we don't want them kind of people around us, we uh, God don't want them either. Wherefore, brother, make, make the condemnation. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly. In other words, the door is going to be open unto you into the, the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For an entrance shall be ministered unto you, shall be opened unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Now, when P Peter wrote this thing, he was trying to make sure that the people that came after him would understand her and get the ramifications that God loves us. And if we can line up with this word, if we can get this word and the love of God in our hearts, he said, the, the doors will be open to us abundantly so that we can enter in the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Man, I, I, I find, sometimes I just think, all this God has made a way for me Little old me just to get in. God has done all these things that I could have eternal life. And then I can't show him a thank you. I can't give him a praise or clap my hand. I can't be obedient to his word. Uh, we, we, we talked about that Sunday about the wrath and the disobedience uh, on, on to the children. Uh, God had wrath on the, the children of disobedience. We can't be caught up in this stuff. We, we, it's time we we're, we're in the latter day saints. I feel that we're in the latter days, and we have to line. It's more uh, important where it's always been important, but it's uh, urgency now. I say that we use the urgency, urgency now that we line up with this word of God in every aspect of our lives. Uh, the old saints, uh, when we were going to school, you said cross every T and dot every U. I mean, dot every I. We're in that stage. I'm 67 years old. We'll be 67 in September. Amen. I will be if I live that long. But <laughs> I'm going to say 67, but 67 to God is not old. 67 to me is old. <laughs> And, 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 and to this body, it feels old. But I have renewed strength every morning that God provides me. And that, in that, I'm trying to say that that shows you how much he loves me. And he gave me 
uh, a special privilege, and I call it a special privilege. And, and you, you might do it to you. He does. He has no respect person. I know if he gives me things, he give it to you. This love that he has, they call it agape love. It, it, one, uh, I think it's over in the Romans. It said, "What shall separate us from the love of God?" I think it's Romans eight chapter. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. And this is the hope that God has given us. This, this is the hope that Abraham saw down through generations. This is the hope that Moses was looking at. This is the hope that the, 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 the Old Testament saints and the New Testament saints looked down through generations and said, there's hope there of eternal life. And if, if we can line up with the word of God, we can line up with what God would have us be, that hope is ours. I look and I see, I'm glad. I'm glad when I wake up in the morning, God has given me another day to do his will. Saints of God, uh, we can't be, have the cardinal way of evilness and uh, cannot abound in our lives. I put it like that. Uh, I often tell people it's tight, but it's right. It's tight to live this life. But we have a guarantee that we will not fall if these things are in us. We have a guarantee that God said, I will make sure it's taken care of. We had that guarantee. Amen. I'm trying to get on down here to it. Number four. Anybody got any questions about uh, 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 the... Uh, what we just talked about. Anybody got any, any comments they want to make on it or say anything that we have discussed? No? All right. Number four says, I ask you this question. Do you see this hope as our hope? Do you see this as our hope? I, I, and I know I get excited. And then I try to project what I see. And, and, I, and, and I can say, well, but you got to see this hope. You got to see what God, the God that I'm talking about, the El Shaddai has given you. And you got to say, I got hope for that. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm seeking God for that. And you got to see that that is our hope. We have hope that God would take us to the praise of his glory through our spiritual growth. And I got to understand there's a growth that takes place. Because when you study the word of God, you start seeing the word of God open up to you. So you grasp onto it. And eventually you're growing. And it's a growth process. But you know that God is raising you up, nurturing you with his word. Amen. I believe that is the ultimate hope God wants us to grasp. This is at the core of God's calling us into Christ. We, and I put down. I started putting me, but I wouldn't. I don't think I was the worst of society. But we are can be assumed as the worst of society. I want to just picture being the worst thing that could be, but by God's grace, there is hope for us. Yeah. <laughs> the worst can be the best in Christ. To become the most excellent examples of love, and this is it, the patience again, tolerance and righteousness. That's what I hope is to be in Christ, to become the most excellent examples of love, tolerance, and righteousness. <laughs> my Lord, my God. You see. <laughs> In this world today, we have a whole lot of people say, they say, there ain't no love there. They can love the ones that love them. And they can get along with people that long as it is for their benefit. Yeah. But this love for Christ got to be in us. Where he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They crucify him, whipping him, pulling his beard up, spitting on him, uh, just doing, slapping him in the face. 
And he still says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he still had the hope that when I get to the cross, it's going to be all right. Did he wrestle with it? Yeah, he wrestled with it. We know that in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Lord, if let this come pass, but thy will be done. It said that he bled, his tears were of blood because he thought about he would think where he was headed. But his all still came down to God's will being done. And this is where we have to have the same thing that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, has to minister to us that we can become the most excellent examples of love, tolerance, and righteousness. We have to be there. And that's what God wants to be. There is hope that we might be the praise of our Savior's glory. Picture God creating man. Man falls. God redeems him. Now God said, I want man to become reconciled back. I want him to be in their former glory. And God raises man up, gives him everything he needs. And then man walks and starts praising and has a love and the tolerance and the righteousness of all the fruits of the spirit in him, everything he brings. And then he comes and God gives the, the open up the heavens and the new heavens and the new earth. Amen. And, and he can sit back and say, look at, look at what I, look at my people. God gets the glory. He said, you're my inheritance. You're the richest of my inheritance. All that I have put in you. He sits back and he's happy. He's, he, he, he gets glory out of that because what you thought was you was no good, God made it good and turned it out to be to his glory. Man, <laughs> we are his inheritance, saints. And I know you can't wrap your mind about it, but we are God's inheritance. And we're going to be there to give him praise and glory all the day long. We're going to worship him. Hallelujah. They talk about the 24 elders sitting around. Hallelujah. I, I, I believe I'll be praising him and worship him for myself. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm trying to get down. Uh, anybody got any questions before I move to number five? And what I use, I use this as, as an example in the NBA, in, in, the VA, in, in, in our society. We might say, uh, I hope I can make it in the NBA without any real understanding or confidence about what the future might hold. And I use NBA because uh, when I was playing basketball, I said, I'm going to play basketball and be like Dr. J. Hallelujah. Now, that was the guy that was in charge. He was a star back in those days. But I was saying those things, but I didn't know what really it cost, what all I had to do. What I, how much training I had to do. I just wanted to, to play basketball. It looks good to play basketball. It feels good to play basketball. That was my hope that I could be in the NBA. And I'm pretty sure y'all had hopes and aspirations too. We might have hope for a happy future with our spouse or hope for a successful career in retirement. But those things are up in the air and not promised. I did this, so I want to show y'all coalition uh, with what I'd be talking about God's promises and what we can promise and what man promised us versus what God promised us. All those dreams of me being in the NBA, hoping in it, were just, just there. It wasn't nothing. I had no promise, no guarantee that I was going to be there, no guarantee that I was gonna have, me and my spouse were going to be having, no guarantee that I was going to retire and have a good life. Those are just uh, aspirations. They're not uh, things that, that, that might happen and, and might not. They're not promised to us. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But God has promised us good things. God has promised us good things right here on this earth. He said he'll cause us to sit in heavenly places. Even one scripture, he said, I'll bring you before kings. I'll bring you before important people. I'll, I'll spread a table in the midst of your enemies. I, I, he said, these are promises God has. 
this is uh, not, uh, uh, I use the whimsical hope, like it's someone hoping to go to Hollywood and become an actor. And I've seen that on TV when I was writing this. Uh, it's actually someone hoping to be an NBA All-Star. The hope that the scripture is talking about is the hope we have for God to fulfill his promises to make us like him. Saints, if you don't get excited, I, 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 you know, I'm not saying you have to, but I get excited. God is making me like him. I go back to Genesis when he made man. Let's create, hey boys, let's create Jesus. The word was there and the Holy Spirit was there. Let us make man in our image in our likeness. And he breathed life into man. And man became a living. My God. Hallelujah. The angels can't say that. Ha, ah, my Lord, my God. Hallelujah. Hey, got the cherubims and the serpents can't say that. But man, only man can say, God, breathe life into me. My Lord, my God. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. The hope that we scripture is talking about, we can be make us like him. This is the greatest hope that anyone could have on earth. And saints, I'm trying to just really, I want y'all just to really grasp what God is saying. God can make every person who comes into Christ to be the praise of his glory. And only God can open the eyes of our hearts to see the hope of your calling through the Holy Spirit. That is so imperative. The Holy Spirit is the key. The Holy Spirit was the one that put, uh, that, that God made a down payment on with us uh, through the Holy Spirit as uh, earnestly through the Spirit. Hey, Amen. He done everything he possibly can do that we can be like him. And to be like him, we have to start reading this word. We have to start opening up this word. We all, I'm not trying to use fear on anybody. I don't want to use fear on anybody. But I want you to know the truth is the truth. We are here for a season of vapor. Uh, Ecclesiastes says it's a time to be born and a time to die. It's a time, and, 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 and we don't, we don't, nobody wants to talk about death. And nobody wants to understand and, 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 and say and welcome death. Because uh, death is something we don't understand yet. We don't know what happens in the cardinal mind, what happens at death. And no scientist can tell us what happens after death. No philosophy can tell us what happens after death. We have things that we can picture in our mind. But we have a revelation from Paul that tells us that we're going to be resurrected in, at death. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, my God, hallelujah. So we got to realize that we can need to address these issues in our life. We need to come to Christ now. We need to give our lives to Christ so that we can be and have this hope that God is making us, making us like him. These thoughts of spiritual hope. I'm not going to go there tonight. The spiritual hope. And those are scriptures that I gave you. Each one of y'all, and I wanted y'all to look at them. Hallelujah. The spiritual hope that we have in them. You can, you might find some more scriptures, but when you, this week, remember God is trying to make you like him. And there are things that has to be, you cannot, the scripture said there's no condemnation to them who walk in the spirit. None. So you can't, can't let the enemy beat you up. Or you see that you ain't with this and you need to know. I gave my life to Christ. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm seeking the Holy Ghost. I'm going to, I want the power that comes, hallelujah, with the Holy Spirit. And I'm not seeking it, hallelujah, to speak in tongues. I'm seeking it because I want the power. I want the seal. I want the, 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 the strength that I need to be to get through this world. And 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 I my belief is that the Holy Spirit is the one that gives you that power. The Holy Spirit 
it would opens up the scriptures to you. So when you read in the scriptures, uh, by his stripes, we are healed. Uh, when you read in the scriptures, you, you run to the scriptures first because the Holy Ghost will give you the scripture rather than run to a doctor. I need to go to the scripture first and then let the scripture minister to me. And then, hallelujah, hallelujah, I do what the thing. The first thing is not go get a town on when I get a headache. The first thing is now, and I'm not saying that because of what just happened here. That's not, that's not, I'm not running to get a pill. I'm running to get a word from God. Amen. Before anything else happens, I need to put my trust in God so that I can be like God. God don't want to go no pill. God says no sicknesses or diseases of him. Those things are of the world. So all we got to do is realize that I'm in God, so I'm not going to have to come near me. I'm in God, so that ain't, that, that ain't going to bother me. That, I, I'm a child of the living God. That's why I tell you all the time when uh, <laughs> whew, that God is good. That's all I can say. He is a, a, a way maker in my life. And I would pray that he'd be the way maker in all of y'all lives. When you come to revelation and knowledge of him, you will find out there's peace. Any, there's nothing God won't do for you, saints. That's in the scripture. Whatsoever you ask for, that scripture says that. The scripture, he said, you ask in Jesus' name? He said, you ask the Father in my name, and I'm going to pray for you. Let the Father do it for you. That's what Jesus said, saints. Not me. Jesus said that in his word. So if you got Jesus praying for you, that's gonna, it's got to come to pass. And then he put it and said, when you pray, pray in the spirit, then the pray, spirit will pray for you. Hallelujah. We have, we serve an awesome God and, 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 and we have to realize how awesome he is and what he's doing in our lives that we can be like him. I uh, often, sometimes, uh, uh, joke around, one day I'm going to walk on water. Amen. It might not be on this earth, water, but I might, when I'm translated, <laughs> uh, uh, when, I, when I don't know what I'm going to be like, but I know I'm going to be like him. When I when I when I want to come in the house, I ain't gonna open the door. I'm just gonna walk through the door, walk through the wall. And that's what Jesus did. I mean, these are things that uh, we don't know what we were made out of, but it's miracles. He did it, and it's nothing too hard for God. If you need it, God will do it. If you trust Him and give Him your life, I'm telling you. And I'm pretty sure Elder Proctor and Elder Wright and anybody else that's saved would tell you God would never let you down. He's a God that keeps to his promises. He's not like man that he can lie. Amen. Amen. Uh, thanks. I wrote some more stuff and uh, I have to give y'all those little pages uh, and I'll try to get them to you. Uh, I got a couple of them to Elder Wright today uh, to update me, but I got some more I'm going to have to send to you through this through this week to prepare you for next week. I hope y'all are reading this stuff. Uh, I don't sit there and write it and, uh, for my own stuff. I'm trying to express what the Holy Spirit has given me. Amen. And uh, so I'm trying to lay it out to you. Amen. So that you can get a better understanding of what God is really doing and wants to do in your lives. Amen. Uh, uh, let's go with uh, Elder, Elder Proctor. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Praise the Lord. I uh, don't mean to, but I do mean uh, what you wrote, Bishop, is not stuff. Words of life. And if you don't see it as life, I might not see that life, but uh, okay. so when you when you write it, God give it to you. Hallelujah! To God be the glory. But why people are scared of death and say they're saved? I haven't figured that out yet. But I'm looking forward to a transformation. 
if no more than walking out of this body, hallelujah, God, and being in the presence of God, and say, if these things be in you, hallelujah, Lord God, if these things be in you, you can't fail. But the average person don't know about this. It seems like they don't know about it anyway. First Peter, first chapter here. Hallelujah, Lord God. These things have to be in us. And, and I say too, Bishop, that our Father is amazing. Hallelujah, Lord God. It's too deep for my little mind. Hallelujah, Lord God. And I, I just thank God that he was merciful enough to to save me. And somewhere I read that the Holy Ghost will speak for himself when he come. So I'm not looking to speak in tongues. Just shut up. Uh, just let him speak. If he has something to say, to God be the glory. And I, I, I'm, I'm saying most people, you know, been taught some crazy stuff. Some crazy stuff. Hallelujah, God. And I'm I'm sorry, but I'm glad. I'm glad that God is God and God all by himself. And that he reveals himself to whom he will reveal himself. And if he hasn't showed you who he is, hallelujah, God, then you need to, in my old way, go back to the altar and stay there until God reveal himself to until you hear from him. In the precious name of Jesus. But Bishop, just hang in there. Oh, yeah. Just hang in there. And, and you see Mother Smith tell her, I say, praise the Lord. Amen. She, uh... All right. Praise God. Amen. I'm back. Yes. Uh, everybody, anybody else got any comments they want to make? No? I right, praise God. Well, Mr. Lancaster with us again tonight. Yeah. Amen. So, Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, John and Brenda's <laughs> here and Carlos. Amen. So uh, we feel like we had a house full. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. The, the sanctuary Hallelujah. is full. Hallelujah, Lord God. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so we truly give God the glory and all the honor. Amen. So uh, like I said, all through the week, if you have questions, Amen. Write them down uh, so that we can have them ready for Bible study or Sunday. Uh, we're we're uh, not in a set program. We you got questions you need answering that pertain to your salvation. It's never a not not right time to ask questions about how do you get saved, Amen, and how you get uh, you want to be uh, baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, Amen. One God's thing, good. One other thing, Bishop. Yes. You know, no matter how many people that you have, God was looking for that one. Hallelujah, God. God was looking for that one. Hallelujah, God. So it doesn't matter if I'm here or Dominique or Elder Wright or anybody else. You just keep speaking what God give you. And uh, God will save somebody. Oh, yes. Praise to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, I, I think else, we're going to ask God. Hallelujah. We're going to close out. Elder Potter, you're going to close out? Look to the Lord. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for being our Lord and our God. We thank you for being the God that you are. I'm not present here, there, and everywhere. Lord, you can go where no man can go into our hearts, our souls, our spirit. You can reveal yourself to us, Lord God. And we thank you for revealing yourself to us. All those that don't know you personally, we're asking you, O oh Lord God, to touch them. Let them hear your voice. Speak to their hearts, their minds. Let them know, Lord God, that you know them personally. In the precious name of Jesus, Lord, until we come again, hallelujah, Lord God, we ask you to abide with us, in us, and keep your angels encamped about us as we go to and fro. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.